Hello, accounting superstars. This is Professor Don Bush from the Accounting Superstar channel. I've been a professor for about 30 years and a CPA for about that long, and I've got great ways to explain accounting, so you've come to the right place to learn accounting. So today's lesson is for principles of accounting, probably about the um, sixth, seventh week of class, very first class in accounting. And um, it's for those students studying accounts receivable. Now, I've got a saying right underneath the title here. Accounts receivable, receivable turnover. And here's what it is. If you do not track what your customers owe, your customers won't do it for you, folks. And that's absolutely true. you got to keep good track of these accounts receivable. Also, um, there's some other reasons why you really need to keep good track of these accounts receivable. Here's the problem that when we get to it, construction is facing. And it's a pretty typical problem, folks. So coming down the page just a little bit. When we get to construction has not done a good job keeping track of accounts receivable. For the past few years, sales have been increasing and so has accounts receivable. Now, let's stop at that right at that point. Now, it's normal for accounts receivable to go up when sales are going up. You know, the more sales you make, the more money people owe you. And the reverse is true also. However, when accounts receivable is going up too fast relative to sales, that can cause really big problems. Let's read on. Although the income statement shows strong profits, cash has been very tight for the company. In fact, when we get to it is considering filing for bankruptcy. So you might think, what? They're filing for bankruptcy? Sales are great. Look at, look at the sales on the chart here. First year, one million. Second year, sales are up a lot. Look at this. By the end of year five, sales are four times as much. How could they be you know, going for bankruptcy. Well, here's the problem. They're making sales, but they're not collecting their money. And a lot of people might say, well, they're making a, a net income. Look at this. Their net income went from 100,000 to 400,000, you know, 425,000. So their net income is staying, you know, rather lockstep uh, with their sales. So what's the problem? Well, we don't pay our bills with net income. All right. We pay our bills with cash. And uh, when we're not collecting accounts receivable, that means we're selling things, but our customers are not paying us. So how can we turn around and pay our uh, workers, our suppliers? Big problem here. It's a big problem, and it doesn't really show up on the income statement. So it's kind of deceptive. So how can we... Uh, uh, you know, track this. How can we look out for danger? Well, it's really easy. One thing that we can do is do a trend analysis. And we could do this every every year that we uh, operate the business. So here's how trend analysis works. And folks, it's called a horizontal analysis also. So what you do in the first year for sales, you just write down 100%. That's all you do, 100%, folks. And you might say, why 100%? Well, just do it. That's all you do, 100%. That's how it begins. And uh, I remember I had one student say, well, um, you know, I, I want to write a different number. No, write down 100%. Okay. So the uh, second year, here's all you do, is you go uh, sales for year two, 1552000 and you divide it by the first year. Now, we're going to always divide it by the first year. That's where people make mistakes. So let's do it for the third year. Third year, what we'll do is take the third year sales, 2140000 divide it by the first year. Always the first year, no exceptions. Fourth year, 3020000 divided by 1 million. Always the first year. And let's do it again for the fifth year. Here's what we get. 410%. So one thing I like about trend analysis or horizontal analysis is that it's really easy to see by how much sales are going up. Look at this. Um, in the second year, sales were up by 55%. By the fifth year, sales are up four times as much. It's, it's really easy to see this. Now let's do the same thing for net income. Now folks, in the very first year, what are you going to write down? Well, it's 100%. Just write down 100%. That's just the way it works. Second year, take 165, divide it by the first year, always the first year. Third year, 195,000, divided by the first year. There we go. Fourth year, fourth year, divided by the first year. Don't get creative here. Always divide it by the first year. And lastly, here we go. Um, the percentage would be 
425%. Now here's where I really like the trend analysis. It's really easy to tell how net income is doing compared to sales. And net income is a little bit better, you know? So sales are going up and net income is doing really well too. So things look good on the income statement and that's where management gets fooled, all right? And uh, they don't see this problem coming until sometimes it's too late. So let's do accounts receivable. So accounts receivable, again, what are we gonna put down for the first year? You know it, 100%. Second year, it'll be 395 divided by 250. Third year, 685 divided by 250. Fourth year, 1,032,000 divided by 250. I hope you uh, can see we're dividing by the first year always. Fifth year, there we go. So let's see how accounts receivable is behaving. Well, accounts receivable is going up also, but it appears that it's going up much faster than sales, and that's where the danger is. So this means we're making sales, we're increasing our sales, but customers are not paying us. So let's look at another indicator. Uh, it's really easy. It's called the accounts receivable turnover. Really easy to remember. It's one of the turnover ratios. And, and it's easy to memorize the turnover ratios. They're, they all work the same way. What you do is take the name of the ratio and turn it over onto the uh, bottom of the, the ratio. So this is called the accounts receivable ratio. So accounts receivable goes on the bottom. Now, nine times out of 10 with these turnover ratios, sales goes on the top. So if you have to guess, sales is a very good guess. Probably nine, nine times out of 10, um, it works this way. And there's about 20, 30 of these ratios, and they're so easy to remember. So some of them might be like the uh, inventory ratio. So if it's the inventory ratio, what goes on the bottom? Inventory. If it's the uh, fixed asset turnover ratio, what goes on the bottom? Fixed assets. Working capital uh, turnover, working capital goes on the bottom. And it's all, always the same. This one's the accounts receivable turnover, so it goes on the bottom. And on the top of the ratio is sales. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to split the screen here so we can see a little bit more. View split, and let me go up here to the original information. There we go. And so all we're going to do is we're going to copy the numbers down. And you, you don't have to copy the numbers down when you're doing this, but it, it just helps to see what's going on here. So we'll copy sales down. Let's copy down accounts receivable. There we go. So the receivable turnover ratio for the first year, all we're going to do is take uh, 1 million and divide it by 250,000, just like the uh, formula says. And we get the number four. And folks, it's okay to round this ratio. This is a very imprecise science. So um, it's okay to round things. Sales for the second year, 1,552,000. Let's bring it down. And accounts receivable, let's drop that down. There we go. And let's do a little division. 1,552,000 divided by 395 is 3.93. So already we can see that the turnover is slowing a bit. The, the turnover is less. So as the numbers get smaller, that means collecting the accounts receivable is getting slower and slower. So let's do year three here. So bring down the sales, bring down the accounts receivable, do a little division, and we get 3.12. So things are slowing down even more. Look at that. So this is an in, not a good indicator. It means that uh, we're not collecting our money as soon as we should be. Let's see what it is for 2004. Here we go, 2.93. Things have really slowed down. <clears throat> Let's bring down the sales for 2005, bring down the accounts receivable, and let's see what we get. So there we go, 2.33. So there's a steady decline in how rapidly we're collecting our money. Now, this uh, receivable turnover, it's a good, indica it's a good indicator, but I, I like it diff doing it a different way. I like the uh, days and receivable. It makes more sense to me, and it's it's so easy to figure out. So I'm going to unsplit the screen here. There we go, and get things set. Here we are. Here we are. So let's figure out the days and receivable. It's super easy. Here's all we do. We just have to remember, well, how many days are there in a year? Well, there's 365 days in a year. So here we go. 365 days in a year. 
There we are, the receivable turnover. We figured that out a moment ago. It's the number four. So the number four, and we drop down here. Um, so 365 days divided by four, which is the receivable turnover, is going to give us 91. And 91 means, on average, it takes 91 days for us to collect our money from our customers, on average. Now, 91 may not be a bad number if our terms are that customers pay us within 90 days. However, it's a really bad number if our, our terms are, you customers, you pay us in 30 days. Well, they're, they're pretty slow, so we don't know their terms, but let's see what's happening to it. So for year two, again, we ask ourselves, how many days are there in a year? There's 365, and we bring down that turnover, that 3.93, do a little division, we get 93. So now it's taking us 93 days on average to collect our receivables. And, and that may not sound like much. It's only, what, two days longer, but it adds up big time. So th this, this is not good. We don't want that increasing. Third year, how many days are in a year? 365, drop down that turnover ratio, do a little division, and we get 117 days. Wow, now it's really taking a long time to collect our money on average. On average, it's taking 117 days. Now, some customers are paying sooner, some customers are paying later. So let's do 2004, how many days in a year? 365, drop down that turnover, 2.93, do a little division, 125. If you notice, I'm rounding off these days, and that, that's cool. You know, I, sometimes students will write down 125 point blah, 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 you know, a whole bunch of decimals, and that's totally unnecessary. I like to just round it to the number of days because it's easier to understand. Fifth year, 365, 365 days, drop down the account receivable turnover, and we have 157 days. So there, folks, there's the problem. Customers are not paying us. We're making sales, a lot of sales. But we might want to look at who we're selling to. You know, they're not paying us. So, or we might might want to step up the collection efforts or um, get organized, something. We got to do something or this company will definitely be going bankrupt. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hope it helped you out. If it did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've got all these videos on accountingsuperstars.com. It's my website where I've got all these videos listed out by topics. So it's easier to find topics. And if you want to learn something, just look it up on accountingsuperstars.com. Until next time, bye-bye.